Hello, in this video we'll be working through Unit 6 Homework Problems 1 through 14. Number 1, we want to find the antiderivative of cube root of x plus x. So we can rewrite this as x to the power 1 third plus x. And then the antiderivative for x to the 1 third, we're going to use our reverse power rule where we add 1 to our exponent, so we get x to the 4 thirds, and then we divide by this new exponent, and dividing by 4 thirds is the same as multiplying by 3 fourths. Plus, then we find the antiderivative of x. We increase the exponent by 1, and then we divide by the new exponent. So we get 3 fourths x to the 4 thirds plus x squared over 2 plus our constant c. Number 2, we don't have to simplify this first. We can go ahead and integrate. The antiderivative of 2x, so we have 2x, we're going to increase the exponent by 1, and then we're going to divide by the new exponent. And we can simplify that, 2 over 2 is just 1. Minus 3x, here we're going to increase the exponent by 1, and then divide by the new exponent. And we can simplify that. And then we have our plus c. So our answer there, x squared minus x cubed plus c. And remember, you can check your answers by taking the derivative of your answer. So if I take the derivative of this, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So 2x minus 3x squared takes me back to my original uh, problem. Number 3. We're going to simplify this before we integrate it. So I'm going to distribute the x squared. x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the power 4, plus x squared times 3x is 3x cubed. And now we're ready to integrate that. So the antiderivative of 2x to the fourth is 2x to the fifth over 5, plus 3x to the fourth over 4 plus c. Number 4, we do not need to simplify this first. We can go ahead and use our power rule for integration. I'm going to add 1 to my exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So I get x to the power 5 over 2 divided by 5 over 2, which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 5, plus 2x becomes 2x squared over 2, or just x squared, plus, and we can use the power rule for 1, but if you're using your power rule, think of 1 as 1 times x to the power 0. Then we're going to increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent, so we just get x. An easier way to think about it might be just to ask yourself the derivative of what equals 1, the derivative of x equals 1, so the antiderivative of 1 is x, and then we need our plus c at the end to account for the possible constant term. Number five, we may or may not want to simplify this. I think it's easier to integrate the square root of x if you rewrite it first as x to the power 1 half, but I think it's easier to integrate 1 over 2 root x if you just leave it as 1 over 2 root x, because that's one of the derivative rules that we've memorized. So just as a side note over here, remember that if we have the square root of x and we find the derivative of that, it's equal to 1 over 2 root x. So when I try and find the antiderivative of 1 over 2 root x, I know that it's just square root of x because I've memorized that the derivative of root x is 1 over 2 root x. So to find the antiderivative of x to the 1 half, I am going to use my power rule where we add 1 to our exponent. We get x to the 3 halves and then divide by 3 halves. But to integrate 1 over 2 root x, I'm just using from memory the fact that square root of x, the derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. So the antiderivative of 1 over 2 root x is square root x, and then plus c. Number 6, we do want to simplify this before we try and integrate it. So I'm going to take 3x squared and divide it by x cubed, and that's going to give me 3 over x plus then I have x over x cubed, that's going to give me 1 over x squared, plus, and then 3 over x cubed. 
Now we can rewrite this as 3x to the negative 1 plus x to the negative 2 plus 3x to the negative 3. And now we're ready to integrate and we can use our power rule, but we cannot use our power rule on this first term. This is that one exception where we can't use the power rule because the power rule would result in dividing by 0. So instead, it's easier to leave it in this original form here and say the derivative of what is 3 times 1 over x. Well, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So 3 times 1 over x, the antiderivative there would be 3 times ln x. So we have 3 times ln x, but it's actually the absolute value of x. We don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we could be taking the log of a negative number or the log of 0, but we already know we can't be taking the log of 0 because that's not part of this original domain here. Plus, the antiderivative for x to the negative 2 would be x to the negative 1 over negative 1. We add 1 to our exponent, divide by the new exponent. So x to the negative 1 over 1 is the same as just 1 over x. And this one you might be able to get from memorization as well. So we know that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So if we try and integrate 1 over x, we should just get ln x, except we have to make sure that we put absolute value around it because if we start with ln x, so here if we're going to take the derivative of ln x, if we start with ln x, we know x can only be greater than 0 because that's a domain restriction for ln x. And so taking the derivative, we don't have to worry about that. But when you're going backwards, if you start with 1 over x, x could be anything except for 0, and we don't want to have negative the possibility of negative x values um, if we say that the antiderivative is ln x. Okay, so uh, the derivative of 1 over x, if you recall, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. So when I see that I'm trying to take the antiderivative of negative 1 over x squared or even positive 1 over x squared, immediately I'm thinking 1 over x or negative 1 over x. Plus 3x to the negative 3. So I'm going to use power rule here as well. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, which is going to give me x to the negative 2. So that puts x squared in the denominator. And then we divide by negative 2. So I have 3 over negative 2. And then plus c at the end. Number 7. We're going to rewrite this. This is y cubed times y to the 1 half. And that's the same as y. We would add our exponents when we're multiplying expressions that have the same base. So 3 plus 1 half is 7 halves. And then we can use the power rule. So we add 1, we get y to the 9 over 2, and then we divide by 9 over 2, which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 9 and then plus c. Number 8, we want to simplify that one first as well. That's 1 over w to the 1 times w to the 1 half. So w to the 3 halves dw, and I'm going to rewrite that as w to the negative 3 halves dw, and then we can use our power rule, where we add 1 to our exponent and divide by the new exponent. So that's negative 2 over w to the 1 half, or root w, plus c. Number 9, we're going to simplify first. So we have x to the power 3 over x to the power 1 half, plus 3 over the square root of x. And this is one that I'm going to, I prefer to leave as over the square root of x, because again, this is a derivative that I've memorized. The derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the bottom of this fraction by 2 and then the top of the fraction by 2. So now I have here 6 times 1 over 2 root x and 
and I know the antiderivative of 1 over 2 root x is root x, so it's going to be 6 root x. But I still have some work to do on this first term here. So I'm going to subtract my exponents. 3 minus 1 half is 2 and a half, or 5 halves, plus, and I have 6 over 2 root x. Okay, now we're going to take the antiderivative of each term here using my power rule. I'm going to add 1 to the 5 halves to get 7 halves, and then divide by 7 halves, and then this is 6 root x plus c. Number 10, we want to simplify this first. So it's x plus 3 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 dx. And then we're going to simplify that even more. So that's going to be, I'm going to do that over here. I have x times x squared, and then x times negative 6x, and x times 9, and then 3 times x squared, 3 times negative 6x, and then 3 times 9. So that's going to give me x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 27. And now we can use our power rule to integrate this. The antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4 minus, and then we have 3x cubed over 3 minus 9x squared over 2 plus 27x plus c. Number 11, here our variable is theta, so it really acts the same way as an x would. This could easily have just had said x squared plus cosine x dx. It means the same thing. So I'm treating theta like my variable. I'm going to increase the exponent by 1, so I get theta cubed, and then divide by the new exponent, theta cubed over 3. Plus, and then when I have to find the antiderivative of cosine, I find it easier to just kind of mentally think the derivative of what is cosine. The derivative of sine is cosine, so plus sine theta plus c. Number 12, I'm going to think of the square root of x as x to the 1 half, and then use my power rule. So I get x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, is the same as multiplied by 2 thirds, minus, again I'm thinking the derivative of what is negative sine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, so I know the antiderivative for negative sine x is cosine x, plus 2x plus c. Number 13, we want to solve for f of x. So I'm going to integrate 2x minus sine x, and that's going to give me f of x. If I integrate f prime of x, I get f of x. So the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. And then the antiderivative for negative sine x is cosine x plus c. That's my equation for f of x. Now I want to solve for c. I know that f of 0 is 4, so f of 0 is 4, and then we let x equal 0. It's cosine of 0 plus c. So 4 equals 1 plus c. That makes c equal to 3. And so my equation for f of x is here but now I know c is 3, so f of x equals x squared plus cosine x plus 3. And number 14, f double prime of x is x squared. We want to find f of x. So if I integrate f double prime, I get f prime. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, and then we need our plus c. That's my equation for 
f prime of x. We want to solve for c. I know that f prime of 0 is 6. So 6 equals 0 over 3 plus c, which means c is equal to 6. So I can put that in for my c. f prime of x equals x cubed over 3 plus 6. Now if I integrate f prime of x, I get f of x. So f of x equals the antiderivative of x cubed over 3. I'm going to increase the exponent by 1 and then divide by the new exponent. So I'm already dividing by 3, and then I'm going to divide by 4, which is the same as just saying divide by 12, plus 6x plus c. Now I want to solve for c. So this is my f of x, but I have to solve for c. I know f of 0 is 3. So 0 over 12 plus 6 times 0 plus c. That's just 0 plus 0. So c equals 3, which means f of x equals x to the power of 4 over 12 plus 6x plus 3.